Amazing stories of someone who had morals. Spoke gently, lifting compassion banners. Never vacillated to say what's right. His conviction in Islam was eternally bright. Was eternally bright. بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وبعد My dear and respected brothers and sisters in Islam السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته and welcome to a new episode from our show The Amazing Stories and we're still with the story of Durayd رضي الله تعالى عن this great worshipper of Allah سبحانه وتعالى who decided to be isolated from the rest of the society and to build his own small tower in which he was making ibadah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, making worship, his small hermitage, away from the rest of the society. And once his mother came to him, and she was calling him, Oh Juraj, can I please speak to you? He said, Oh my Lord, what should I do? My prayer or my mother? Because of his ignorance, he actually chose to ignore his mother and to stay in his prayer and that was a major mistake. A major mistake. His mother came the second day. And that was the same situation. And the third day again. And the same situation occurred. It was the same problem again. She got very upset. And she asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She made dua against him. She asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To not make him die. Until he actually looks at the ones who make a woman that falls into adultery, which is known as being a mumisa in the Arabic language. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of course answered her dua, although it was not the best dua to be made. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it in a way that this dua would be answered so that Juraj learned his lesson, takes the lesson and gets the ta'deeb, the correction from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this dunya. Because Juraj was a beloved person to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he wanted him to become a better person. So the Mumisa, one of the women of Banu Israel, she said to them, of his nation, she said to them, let me take care of him. I'm going to him and call him to haram. And this man that you think, oh you people, you think that he is so practicing, that he is so religious, you will see how my beauty will be much stronger than his faith and his patience. They said, go ahead and let's see what you can do. So she said to him, she went to him and she called him and she said, oh Juraj, this is the very beautiful such and such lady. Come, you can be with me. And Juraj, he ignored her and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserved him from her temptation. After that, she got very upset and she said, no, I need to do something. I cannot go back to people and tell them that I failed in my mission. So she thought and she looked around and she said, Oh, there's a shepherd that actually comes under the place of Juraj, under the room of Juraj. And he stays there for a long time. And he comes very often. So she went to that shepherd and she made him fall into the temptation and fall into haram. And she became pregnant because of that. After a few months, she had a baby and people asked her and said, Who is this baby? Where do you bring him from? Where did you get him from? She said, He is the son of that man there. Meaning Juraj, the one who is praying there. So people got very upset and at the same time, they said, This is our opportunity. We are very happy because now we can harm Juraj. We have an excuse to go and to be wrong and to be bad against him. So they went to his sawma'a and they started calling him, Hey Juraj, come down, come down. We have a problem here. Juraj never accepted to go down and he remained calm in his prayer, in his salat, making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not knowing what was going on and how big of an accusation was made actually against him, ruining his image and ruining his honor. So they went and they brought back some of the tools and they started destroying his sawma'a, his mosque. Juraid now of course he's panicking. 
It's like, what's happening now? It's not somebody calling me anymore. I really have to go down. So, Juraid went down, and my dear brothers and sisters, you can imagine how scared he, he was, how terrified he was by seeing so many people with tools. They are so mad, they are screaming at him. And subhanAllah, these people, they have no respect. They have no respect. They are not only not practicing people, not only that they are accusing him, and they want bad for him, at the same time they don't even respect the place that was built for the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I mean at least leave it as it is, maybe somebody else who is better than Juraj in your eyes will come and will start worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala over there. But no, they took as an opportunity to destroy anything that was related to the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Was a boo, and they insulted him. They started insulting him. And at the same time, وَجَعَلُوا يَضْرِبُونَ And they started beating him up. The poor Juraj, he doesn't know what's going on. People, they come to him, subhanAllah, just making the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And people come to him, they insult him, they beat him up. What's wrong here? What's going on? And this, my dear brothers and sisters, let's not forget that all of this is simply a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and a result of his disobedience to his mother. And he did not know about that. And because he was unjust, listen to this, because he was unjust towards his mother, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent him people who were unjust towards him. So that he gets his punishment in this world before the hereafter. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sometimes, and this is very interesting, and it will give you a lot of hope in your life, and make you become very positive inshallah ta'ala, when you view difficult situations and you go through them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, sometimes He would test His servants, His beloved servants, and He would punish them in this life, so that they won't be punished with the very tough punishment of the grave, or even worse, the punishment of the hellfire. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from that. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا أَصَابَكُمْ مِنْ مُصِيبَةٍ فَبِمَا كَسَبَتْ أَيْدِيكُمْ Any calamity, any hardship that will hit you, it is only because of that which you have made with your own hands. Meaning our sins. Sometimes some problems happen to us. Our money gets stolen. Our car gets into an accident and so on. And we shouldn't get mad. We should say, Alhamdulillah. Because this is my punishment in the hereafter that was given to me in this dunya. I prefer having my money stolen and then work a little bit more and get my money back than being punished in the hellfire, of course. So this is why you find actually that those who are religious and close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are more, they go through more tests and situations of difficulties than those who are not. The Prophet ﷺ told us that the ones who get tested the most in this life are the Anbiya, the Prophets والسلام, and then those who are pious and then so on, so on, so on depending on their level of uh, basically how close they are to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the origin of course of all of this Problem goes back to what? The root of the problem is what? Is the lack of knowledge of Juraj. Again, my dear brothers and sisters, knowledge, knowledge, knowledge. Someone might never be a good Muslim, a better Muslim, if he or she does not seek knowledge. Especially the necessary knowledge. How is it that Juraj did not even know that obeying your parents and listening to your mother is a great obligation, while your prayer is not an obligatory prayer. It's a supplementary prayer, an optional one, meaning you can delay it for another time and you have to go and listen to your mother. Meaning, had it been that Juraj gave only once the time to learn about the rights of the parents in the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he would have avoided all of these problems. So my dear brothers and sisters, please let us define and remember and look for what are the things that are relevant to our situation that we need to learn and then after that we are going to learn them. So if you are, as we have mentioned, if you are rich or wealthy 
and you are in a good health and you never went to pilgrimage, then it is the time for you, for example, to start learning about pilgrimage and to start booking your ticket and planning your trip to pilgrimage as soon as possible because right now you have all of the conditions that are gathered. If you are rich and you do business and mashallah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you a lot of wealth, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase your wealth with halal, then it is time for you to go and learn about zakat. What is zakat? What is the right of zakat? Zakat is one of, one of the pillars of Islam, meaning it's as important as prayer and Ramadan and pilgrimage and so on. And then he said, so Juraj, they hit him so hard, they beat him so badly. He told them, Masha'nukum, what's the matter with you? What's going on? Why would you hit me? What did I do? I mean, subhanAllah, I'm sure he was so shocked because he's like, I have no social interaction. How can I have wronged someone or why would these people come to me? What did I do? I'm alone in my own world, in my own bubble. I'm far from the people. قَالُوا زَنَيْتَ بِهَذِهِ الْبَغِي They said, you have committed adultery with this baghi, with this bad woman. Subhanallah. فَوَلَدَتْ مِنْكَ She had a baby with you. So now imagine Juraj, Subhanallah, all of the things before are nothing compared to now. Destroying his sawma'a, he might accept that and rebuild it again. Beat him up, he might remain patient. Insult him, he might remain patient. But when people come and completely ruin your honor and they accuse you of something you have never heard about and they tell you that you are a sinful person, that you are someone who practices adultery. And on top of that, not only you practice adultery, they tell you this baby is your son. Meaning now, from now on, they will believe and they will want you to take care of this baby. You have a baby in your life that has to be yours. They force you to take this baby as yours. Imagine how sad Juraj was and how shocked he was. So this is a huge accusation, my dear brothers and sisters. But as we know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always protects the believers. Although He makes them go through tests, and these tests sometimes comes from people, come from people who are not practicing, who are far from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never give victory to those people over those who are pious. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will always make a way for those who fear Him in this dunya as well as in the akhirah. Let's see what did Juraj do to save himself right after the break. Insha'Allah ta'ala, stay with us. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. This conviction in Islam was eternally bright, was eternally bright. Back to the Prophet. Join Sheikh Amr in the program Back to the Prophet, wherein he teaches us practical lessons from the Prophet's life and how this can help us to overcome our challenges in the present. We talk about the life example of the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, seeking guidance for ourselves. In the early days after the revelation of the Holy Quran, the Muslims were greatly persecuted, so much so that Quite a few Muslims had to leave Arabia and migrate to Africa to live among Ahl Kitab, Christian people who followed the Gospel of Christ. This conviction in Islam was eternally bright was eternally bright. Assalamu alaikum my dear brothers and sisters and welcome back to our series, our show, The Amazing Stories and with the events that happened to Juraj radiallahu ta'ala and this great worshipper of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So people are telling him, we are here because we are very upset at you because you had adultery with this woman. 
So Juraj, radiallahu ta'ala an, what did he do? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him confidence and gave him power in that moment to deal with the situation. He said, Aina sabi? Fajaubi. He said, Okay, where's the baby? I want to see the baby. So they brought the baby to him. And then after that, of course, they are wondering, why does he want to see the baby? Because he missed him? Because it's his father? They don't know. So he said, give me a chance. Please give me a chance. He said, دعوني حتى أصلي. He said, please just give me a short moment. Allow me to make a prayer. فَتَوَضَّأَ وَصَلَّى They said, go ahead, you the hypocrite, who again, you're claiming that you are going to make prayer because you are a pious person, go ahead, pray. So he made wudu, he made his ablutions, and then after that, he made his salat. Why is he making salat? Of course, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made the solution to every problem in salat, in prayer. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَاةِ And seek assistance in what? In prayer, sorry, in patience as well as prayer. Meaning the believer should always be seeking assistance and power from two things in difficult situations. Patience and the other thing is salat, is prayer. Because prayer is our link with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Prayer is the issue or the place or the location or the situation in which we can ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us and to give us a way out of the trouble in which we are. فَتَوَضَّأَ وَصَلَّى And we know also, my dear brothers and sisters, it's interesting how the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was described as إِذَا حَزَبَهُ أَمْرٌ فَزِعَ إِلَى الصَّلَاةِ The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it was from his sunnah. Whenever something would really con- be concerned, he would be concerned of something, he would be worried about something, he has a problem, he's going through a hardship, the Prophet ﷺ would run into salat right away. Because he knows that the salat is the solution. It's the place where you can go and ask for help. Like on the phone. In every country they have a number for emergency. In America, for example, I know it's 911. So anytime you have a problem, someone is sick, you're feeling sick, you feel someone is coming to your house to rob it, anything like that, right away you go to your phone and 911. So our real 911, the biggest 911 is what? Is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Is salat. To go to salat, to be in link, to be linked to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we will have the assistance and the help of our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say also, whenever he would get in difficult times, whenever he would feel sad or anything like that, he would say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, أَرِحْنَا بِهَا يَا بِلَالِ He would say, oh Bilal, the one who used to make adhan, he would tell him the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, make adhan, أَرِحْنَا بِهَا Let us find our peace, our calm, in Salat, our good feeling, we will find it in Salat because we will seek the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also because in Salat we can make dua in our sujood. In our sujood, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam told us and informed us that the closest point and the closest situation where the servant, where the one of us is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is when we are making our sujood in our prayer. And that's why he said, alayhi salatu wasalam, that we should increase our dua, our invocation in our sujood. Because that's the best place to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we put our forehead on the ground, on the floor, that is the situation of complete submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Physical and spiritual. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will answer our dua even more and it will be even a stronger dua. And by the way, this hadith shows to us that the followers of Jesus, of Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, in their time, they had wudu. They used to make 
wudu, they used to clean themselves before praying. They would put water on their face, on their hands, and so on. And it is just sad how nowadays they don't know of that. They don't know that Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, that Jesus alayhi salam, used to make wudu, and that his followers used to make wudu and clean themselves before prayer. And unfortunately, because they don't know that, they get upset whenever they see a Muslim in a public location. A lot of them, when they see him making wudu in the washrooms, they will start wondering, why is he putting his feet inside the sink and so on. While as we know, this is a sunnah of all the prophets of Isa والسلام, of the Prophet Muhammad والسلام, we are only continuing the legacy and the path of the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alayhi salatu wa salam. فَلَمَّنْ صَرَفْ Now that he was able to finish his prayer, alhamdulillah, they gave him this opportunity. What did he do? أَتَى الصَّبِيَّ He came to the baby boy. فَتَبَسَّمَ He smiled. جريج is smiling. People are accusing him, they are hurting him. He is smiling. Salat gave him this power, this confidence that he was able to smile. ثُمَّ مَسَحَ رَأْسَ الصَّبِي And then he started touching very softly the head of the baby. Patting the head of the baby. And then after that, فَطَعَنَ فِي بَطْنِهِ So after touching softly the head of the baby, he took his finger, the finger of Juraj, and he started hitting the stomach of the baby. He started hitting the stomach of the baby. وقال, and then he told him, يا غلام من أبوك? He said, oh baby boy, tell me, tell us who is your father? Now of course imagine how people, how amazed they are. They think Juraj is making fun of them. He's really crazy, anything like that. He's talking to a baby and telling him, Who is your father? Would the baby speak? Would the baby know who his father is? Normally not. So first of all, my dear brothers and sisters, let us reflect upon this part of the story by reflecting upon the calm and the easiness with which Juraj radiallahu an was dealing with the situation. He did not get nervous. He did not get stressed. He did not say, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, let me down. No. He is dealing with it with a positive manner. He's saying there must be a solution. I know that I'm not wrong. I did not do what they are accusing me of. So I know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will save me and will make a way out of this situation for me. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likes it when the believer is calm, when he is rational, when he is wise, when he thinks, not when he is nervous and he does just emotional things without thinking about what he, was, what he is doing. And this is why the Prophet wasallam once, he told one of his companions, Al-Ashaj ibn Abdul Qais, Inna fika khaslatay. You have two attributes in your personality. يُحِبُّهُمَا اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ That are very beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to His Messenger alayhi salatu wa assalam. What are these two attributes? He said, الْحِلْمُ anat. He said, الْحِلْم الْحِلْم is what? حِلْم They say, هُوَ الْعَفْوُ بَعْدَ القدرة. The Hilm is the one who is able to take revenge when people make him mad. He has the strength for it, but he forgives. So it's forgiveness. Hilm is forgiveness. But it's the forgiveness that comes from the one who is actually able to do something. To harm the others, but he forgives. Because he's very patient. This is called al Hilm. Well, Anat, al Anat is what he comes from. Ta'anni is the one who takes his time. He reflects when he is in a sensitive situation, when he is addressing a sensitive topic. He does not take decisions very quickly, without calculating, without thinking, without being wise. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves that for us. And this is more specifically, my dear brothers and sisters, 
it applies more specifically in dangerous situations. Situations of confusion, of fitna. That's how we should deal and behave as believers. In those situations, we should take our time, not go too fast. And this is why the Prophet ﷺ told us that in the end of the times, like nowadays, when we get the closer we get to the Day of Judgment, there will be so many trials, so many fitan, as we see it nowadays exactly. So many problems, so much confusion, whether it's political problems, religious, social, anything like that. And the Prophet ﷺ told us what to do in the times of fitan. He said, the one who is walking in those fitan is better than the one who is running. Meaning, the faster you go, the worse it is. Those who run into the fitan, whatever something happens, they run to make comments about it, to write articles about it, to make blogs about it. They are not at the best of the situation. The one who is walking, meaning he's taking his time before judging and taking action, is better. And the one who is standing is better than the one who is walking. Meaning the one who is not walking into those feet and he's just standing and he's looking at what's going on is better than the one who is walking. And the one who is sitting is actually better than the one who is standing, meaning that's the best of all, that in the times of fitan, if we cannot do something that we are sure that it has more benefit than harm, we are not 100% sure about our position, we sit down and we leave it, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take care of that situation. And Juraj radiallahu ta'ala an, he was having that kind of a behavior. This was a trial for him, a test for him. He took his time, he made his salat, and then he said, bring me the baby with confidence. And then he told the baby, who is your father? Let's see what happened after that, because we know that babies don't speak and are not supposed to speak. But we will have the rest of the story, inshallah ta'ala, in our next episode. So please be with us. Jazakumullahu khairan for your patience and attention. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta, astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk, wa assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. I love the Prophet who struggled so hard When his mission was just a start He held the hands of each companion I'm ashamed to play with little children with little children Amazing stories of someone who had morals Spoke gently, lifting compassion banners Never vacillated to say what's right His conviction in Islam was eternally bright was eternally bright